From eyewitness news to accounts to testimonies, eyewitnessing has shaped our judicial and modern societal world. But what makes it tick? And is it reliable? In psychology, emotion and memory are impossible to separate and in most cases end up affecting each other, whether according to reality or not. Larry Griffin was wrongly executed for a drive-by shooting in 1995 by the Criminal Court of Justice. Eyewitness accounts originally testified he was guilty, but afterwards, under further investigation, admitted their unsureness to their original eyewitness accounts. Which ultimately leads to the knowledge question, what role does emotion play in relation to memory? From events that we read or see on the television or even in real life, do eyewitness accounts equate to any level of reliability? First off, emotion constitutes intuitive feelings deriving from circumstances, moods, and sentiments for others, which could affect the eyewitness account in an unreliable way by having expectations, sorts of interests, or even stress and anxiety. Memory is the storing of information and its retrieval from the brain. This can be affected over time and also by emotions. Ultimately, reliability is the ability to be dependable for honesty, accuracy, and uninterrupted consistency. While the question of what role emotion plays in memory is asked, keep in mind its relation to the overall reliability of eyewitness testimonies. The three key problems and aspects to eyewitness testimonies that lead to its ultimate inaccuracy is that eyewitness accounts have to be accountable for 1. Bias Also, reconstructive memory, which may be unreliable due to a large amount of errors that occur in memory reconstruction caused by experimental recalls of the same memory that become intermixed with the reality of the event. Oftentimes, reconstructive memory is selective to remembering highly emotional memories, such as in flashbulb memories. Psychological factors could affect the eyewitness account in an unreliable way by having preconceived expectations or personality interests and stress and anxiety. For example, imagine a bystander observing a similar situation where two cars pass by, the driver of the green car with an aggressive disposition, while the driver of the red car has a calm demeanor. While the strike may have come from a passenger of the green car, psychological factors could cause memory to reconstruct itself to believe that the car with the aggressive driver was the perpetrator, causing an unreliable eyewitness testimony. Even the memory of the auditory senses could be overcome with the new constructive memory. To accompany the visual memory of the aggressive driver, Imagining or remembering that the sound of the shot came from the car with an aggressive driver would seemingly be more logical, and therefore recreate the memory to fit into that piece. In recent studies, violence has been shown to heavily correlate with blurring memory. In instances where students from Pacific Union College had to watch videos, students often forgot the surrounding details and situational factors when a violent situation was depicted. They forgot up to less than 50% of the key important details. Psychological factors that may be a leading cause in this in eyewitness accounts includes one, having expectations. Second, 
The personality and interests of the person's distinct personality could cause an emphasis on the details that stand out in an eyewitness report. And the last, but also leading cause of psychological factors is stress. Additionally, the longer the time, the more inaccurate the recall. Facts and details may disappear over a period of time, and memory will be selective to hold onto events of interest or emotion. However, emotion is not as heavily dulled by time, and while most times you won't remember the exact details of something, you'll remember how it made you feel. An example of this is the flashbulb memory, which remembers a memory in vivid detail in consequence of emotion or surprise. Usually, this event is personally significant and causes the memory to be repeatedly rehearsed. Even flashbulb memories can serve 9-11 degrade over a short period of time. Just seven weeks after the attack, 690 people surveyed averaged that it was one hour between the fall of the first tower and the second, when it was almost two full hours. Years later, when surveyed again, this average continually dropped, some saying that it happened almost immediately after or they were both consecutively attacked. When it comes to memory and eyewitness news, the information witnessed may fall into schematic categories and therefore be inaccurate. Schema is a representation or a planned form of something that follows an organized pattern of thought, like a puzzle. The brain will try to piece together things that aesthetically and schematically make sense, whether they have any backing behind it or not. Ultimately, with the role of emotion in flashbulb memories, and the role of schematic puzzling in memory, as well as personal bias, all of these ultimately point towards the fact that eyewitness testimonies are rarely up to a full 100% correct, and is therefore unethical to be the sole determinant of a person's conviction of whether they are guilty or not. While not completely reliable, eyewitness testimonies can still provide useful details and point towards the right direction. However, when using eyewitness testimonies, always take them with a grain of salt, acknowledging their ultimate sway by the powers of emotion and memory.